Jasper, you might recall in the last section um, that we were working with the power rule. It's the, the first integration form that we learned, and that looks like this, right? The integral of u to the n du is u to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus a constant, right? We add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, and this works as long as n is not equal to negative 1. Because if n is negative 1, then we would be dividing by 0 here in the result. So in this section, we're actually going to patch up that hole um, that we have in, in the power rule. Um, and uh, that brings us to the logarithmic form. Remember that the derivative with respect to x of ln x is 1 over x. Um, and so that would imply, you know, kind of reversing this, that the integral of 1 over x dx is ln x. And that's mostly true. It's actually ln of absolute x. And we do that to make sure that the domains are the same. Um, and um, so that gives us this basic logarithmic form. This is for when the power is negative 1. And the basic log form looks like this. The integral of du over u, or which you could write as 1 over u du, is ln of u, ln of absolute u, plus a constant. Um, so essentially, you know, I, I recognize the log form as being like if I'm looking at a fraction and what I have sitting on top is the derivative of what's on the bottom, then I can use the, the log form. So uh, in this case, uh, our first example, kind of a simple one, we're just going to let u equal x plus 1, then du is equal to dx, just 1 dx, and if I make the substitution, then we have du over u, and that gives us ln of absolute u plus a constant. Putting our u back in, ln of absolute x plus 1 plus a constant. Um, let's try another one. Um, when we're looking for our substitutions, you know, we think about, okay, I want to pick a function for u, and I want to make sure I see its derivative show up somewhere else. Now, in this function, in this integral, it seems like it could go either way. The derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, so, you know, we would just be off by a constant um, multiple, which is not a problem. Uh, but you have to remember that in all of the substitutions that we do, du is never in the bottom. Du is never in the bottom of a fraction. So, um, and, and also, just because if this is going to be a log form, um, then we would have u has to be the stuff sitting on the bottom. So we're going to let u equal sine x. Then du is cosine x dx. So that cosine x dx, that's right here. There's our du, and this is, of course, u. So rewriting this, we have integral of du over u, which is absolute or ln of absolute u plus a constant, um, ln of absolute sine x plus a constant. So one thing I want to point out is we just showed that the integral of cotan of x dx is equal to ln of absolute sine x plus a constant, right? I mean, this is, right, what we have here, cosine over sine, that is the cotan function. Some books kind of present this as a whole different formula, like a whole new formula, like remember that the integral of cotan is natural log of absolute sine x. Um, there is absolutely no need for that. It just fits this log form. Um, I'm not a fan of having to memorize tons and tons of formulas when, when fewer will do. Uh, so um, I, you know, just keep that in mind. Um, you, this is not a formula that is, needs to be memorized at all. We just have to remember how to make a U substitution, which we need to know how to make U substitutions anyway. Um, all right, in this example, uh, if you want to have a go at thinking about what uh, a good use substitution would be, go ahead and pause the video now. Um, when I approach this, uh, I remember that the derivative of e to the u is 
e to the u uh, times du dx, of course. Um, so e to the stuff is its own derivative. So I see that, right? I see this happening, you know, the, these showing up. I also remember that du is never in the bottom. Um, so I'm going to do a couple of things here. So now I've got an idea about what I might pick for u. Um, I'm going to just drag this uh, factor of 5 out of the integral. So I remember that e to the stuff is its own derivative, and of course the derivative of a constant term is zero. So I'm going to let u equal 1 minus e to the 3x. In that case, du is negative 3 e to the 3x dx. Right, there's our chain rule. They're giving us the factor of negative 3. Um, so it looks like I have du. Oh, I forgot to bring the dx down. Let me do that. It looks like I have du up here. I've got that factor of e to the 3x. I'm just off by this factor of negative 3. So I'm going to put that in and compensate outside thusly. So negative 5 thirds integral. Now what I have is du, right, this part here. That's du, and of course we've got u in the bottom. This does fit the log form. A lot of the time when we're making a substitution, I just kind of go for, oh, if I, you know, what can I let u equal so that I see du show up? And then once I rewrite it, I kind of reassess and say, oh, is this a form I know? Um, this, maybe not surprisingly, ends up being a log form just because it's in the section where we're lo uh, learning about the log form. Um, we get negative 5 thirds. Now we can integrate this, right? So negative 5 thirds ln of absolute u plus a constant. And uh, substituting our expression for u back in, negative 5 thirds ln of absolute 1 minus e to the 3x plus a constant. OK. Let's do another. Um, in this next example, this looks remarkably similar to the other one. In fact, I'm going to start out the same way, and then I'm going to um, pull out this factor of 5. The difference between this example and the one we just did is that this time the denominator is squared. Um, and this is a great illustration of what I like to call uh, the hammer syndrome. So we're going to be careful. I'm going to introduce there's a new symbol called like a tricky bend. So beware, kind of like a, a warning a sign in the road. Beware the hammer syndrome. And the hammer syndrome is the scenario where once you get a shiny new hammer, everything looks like a nail. Um, when we learn about a new integral form, we think we could fit anything to that form. That's not how integration works. We're trying to, when we do integration, we're trying to make substitutions, sometimes do some algebra, rewrite this function so that it reveals its form to us. Um, we're not we're not choosing a form. The form is already there. We just have to recognize it. Uh, in this example, well, the same u will work just fine that we used in the last one. So we're going to let u equal one minus e to the three x. Du is is of course still negative three e to the three x dx. We're off by a factor of three still, or negative three. I'm going to put that in. Compensate outside. And when I rewrite it with u's now, we have negative five thirds integral. Up top, here's our du. On the bottom, we have u squared. This is not a log rule, a log form integral. I know it's not a log form integral because a log form integral is du over u. Very specifically, du over u to the first, not u squared, not the square root of u, 
Like, no, the, 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 the U cannot be raised to any power other than the first power for it to be a log rule. This is, in fact, a power rule integral. We still know how to do it, right? We just have to recognize that it's a power rule and not a log rule. So um, now integrating using the power rule, we have u to the minus 1 uh, divided by negative 1, or that's the same as multiplying by negative 1, so I'll write it that way. So now we have a positive 5 thirds times 1 over u plus a constant. I'm going to put the u back in. Our expression for u is, is 1 minus e to the 3x. So uh, putting this all back in and simplifying, we have 5 over 3 times 1 minus e to the 3x plus a constant. And there's our result. Again, remember you can always check your answers. You know, if you we have a derivative rule for everything. So if you take the derivative of this function, you will recover the original function in the integral.